All right, so we've talked about the starting steps, what platform to start on, what funnel to send traffic to. But next, we really need to talk about the fun part, which is the ad. How do we actually create an ad that stops the scroll, gets people to convert into leads, calls, sales for your business? And I wanna preface this by saying that ads are gonna look different for everyone. There is no copy and paste approach for you. The main reason for that is that everyone's personality is different. Every single you know star of the ad is gonna be a little bit different. And so this is something that you're gonna to have to play around with quite a bit. You're gonna to have to test things quite a bit until you get something that works. You know, you might test five ads, the first four might fail abysmally, and the fifth one might have just a slight change, and it might be something that you're able to spend several hundred thousand dollars on because it just works. The name of the game here is to keep trying until you find one that works. And so I'm gonna actually show you some, some shortcuts here on how to make sure that you start off in a way that you can find an ad that's gonna work uh, without having to spend a bunch of money testing on stuff that just straight up doesn't work, right? So that's what we're gonna get into. So first off, what is the purpose of an ad? The purpose of an ad is that it stops the scroll. So first and foremost, the, the sort of inertia of the scroll is your main enemy when you're writing an ad. So people are scrolling on their phone, they're scrolling on their phone, they're scrolling on their phone, and they're programmed to skip through ads. I don't know if you've ever noticed that, but you, you have a pretty good sense on what's an ad and what's organic content when you're looking at social media. And so for advertising on Meta, on, which is Facebook and Instagram, if, you, if you're on the feeds, if you're in the story, wherever you are, your main goal is to get people to, first off, be interested in your ad. And usually that means they shouldn't think that it's an ad right away. You know, unless you're a software as a service or, you know, some large box company, your ad should not scream ad. It should feel pretty native to the platform that it's on and it should stop the scroll. It should be interesting enough that it catches attention. Uh, and, and not only does it catch attention, but it catches attention of the right person at the right time. So there is such thing as getting the wrong person's attention and, you know, uh, through testing a lot of different variations of ads, I found that it, not all clicks are good clicks, right? And so really what we want to do is stop the scroll for a person that you want to see your ad and click on your ad and not everybody else. It's unique, it's different, and it hits the spot for your target audience. Second, what an ad should do is it should identify a problem that a prospect has. So a good ad should make your prospect feel like they've been watched, right? Have you ever thought that your phone is listening to you? Um, it's, here's the thing, it's not, um, at least not at the level that you think it is. The computational power alone and, and the data upload of all the sound bites that you'd be recording into your phone all day, going back to Facebook, it's not possible, it's just not. However, they do know pretty much every page you've ever visited. You know, they know everything that you've stopped and looked at. They know how much of a video you've watched, X, Y, and Z. So if you're able to effectively target people with the right ad at the right time, they will feel like, is my phone listening to me, right? And that's kind of the point because targeted ads actually should provide a solution to a problem that people actually have. And unless they actually have that problem, they probably wouldn't be talking about it in real life and they probably wouldn't think that your phone, their phone was listening to them unless you're solving a real problem that they have right in that moment. I'm a fan of ad personalization, obviously, my company's ad class, but it should actually feel native to the platform because it should be solving a problem that's, that's relevant in their mind at that time. You know, they, they should have to ask the question, how in the heck did they know I was struggling with this problem or that I was looking for this solution, right? That's what a good ad does. Third, it should educate your lead or the person that's looking at your ad on the process or the solution that you uniquely solve. So a good ad does not just present the problem that the prospect has. It doesn't just make them say, how do they know I had that problem? It also attempts to solve that problem. And yes, I do mean the ad. The ad can solve that problem, right? Not the product, not the VSL. The ad can do it too. It will position your unique solution as the answer to the problem that they have. And it's gonna do it in a way that adds value, isn't too good to be true, and is also backed up by solid proof. Of course, you're not gonna give away everything at the ad level, but you should be giving enough that you're building credibility with the people that are watching the ad. Number four, it should build trust with your brand and your solution. So if people don't know who you are and they're looking at your ad, you have to find a way to build trust through that ad. So good ad is gonna make sure that your prospects believe your message, they think it's true. Basically, they build trust with you through you telling your story or showing them testimonials, you, you know, building credibility. So a good ad should do that as well. 
And number five, it should present a clear next step. We call this a call to action or a CTA. A good ad is gonna have a very clear CTA that is gonna allow the prospect to learn more about your solution. So it's not enough to, to position them with the problem, teach them about the solution, build the trust. You also have to give them an action item, a next step that they can take to learn more about your solution. So the question then is, what does the ad look like, right? What is the format? What works? What doesn't work? Here is what's currently working. And we're spending you know, several million a month on, on ads specifically for offers like this. So what we find that works time and time again is pretty dang simple. It's selfie style videos that feel organic to the platform that they're on. So I mentioned this earlier, but, but really any sort of ad that you ever run should feel very organic to the platform it's on. If you're running ads on Facebook and Instagram, they should feel like Facebook and Instagram posts, right? And so those sort of selfie style videos where you're holding your phone and you're, you know, like this and you're recording into your phone, those work really well because they feel like they're supposed to be on the platform. You know, these can be short or long, mess with the placements. You can mess with, you know, the aspect ratios, all that kind of stuff. But in the end, selfie style videos are really something that you can scale very heavily on Facebook and Instagram. Number two, if you don't have uh, you know, videos or, or you're not super comfortable recording videos, I would say try to get comfortable doing it. But if, if that's something that you're not willing to do, images still do work quite well on Facebook and Instagram. So lifestyle focused images are kind of what we would say to start with, which are going to be basically something that displays like the life that your prospect is looking for. So, you know, if there's something that they wish to achieve, let's just say you're teaching how to, you know, escape the nine to five and, and do the four hour work week, whatever it is, then recording a, a video ad or posting a picture rather of yourself at the beach with your laptop during the workday, you know, that could be an ad that works quite well because, you know, it's not flashy, but it is showing the lifestyle that they're hoping to achieve, right? So rooftop photos, photos of, of uh, you know, you with your kids or on vacation or, you know, whatever it is, those sort of photos do seem to work pretty well. Also because they feel like they belong on the platform. Like I said earlier, that's what people post on Facebook and Instagram. So it works. And then third, something that's working quite well right now in a bunch of different ad accounts are carousel ads. So these are the, the ads that you can actually swipe through uh, left to right and see different sort of graphics or pieces of copy on those ads um, and infographics. So especially if you have like a really strong hook, something that really is captivating and unique to your business or your offer, infographics can actually display that message pretty quickly and, and get the point across maybe even faster than video. So those do work pretty well. But of all of these three, selfie style videos are definitely going to be number one. So a good example here from Taylor is actually just a quick selfie style video that he filmed in the car. This one has gotten a lot of great results and it's super duper simple. It's pretty short too. So the length can vary. It can be, it can be less than a minute and that's gonna actually let it serve in more placements, but it could also be up to 10 minutes if you really had something you wanted to teach of value in that ad. Uh, and that's something that, that you can test along the way. So the next question is gonna be, well, cool. I'll record a video ad, but like, what do I say? It's a very good question. And this is something that is gonna be probably the thing that you spend the most time on when it comes to ads, honestly, is the message in the copy. So I actually have a formula here and I'm gonna, I'm gonna put the link uh, somewhere around this video so you can download this. This is basically the ad script that we typically use at our agency. And so this is gonna be something that we usually script out, but it's pretty simple to script out yourself for your offer. And so this is ideally designed to convert cold traffic, so people who have never heard of you before into obviously leads and then buyers. And this is primarily for video ads. So really quick, I'll, I'll just kind of run through this in, in the way that it works. And then, like I said, this is downloadable so you can fill this in for yourself. Here we go. So first off, the main point before we even start with the framework here is that it's super duper important that you have a good understanding of your offer, your USP and your audience before you ever even start writing copy because those things have to be ingrained in your mind as you're writing. And this is just a template. This isn't gonna give you really how to think about these things. It's more so gonna give you the step-by-step -step of what works in what order. So first off, we always start with a hook and the hook is basically designed to be an intro to the ad that stops the scroll and gets attention. Like I said earlier, this hook can actually, it can qualify people as well. So you might see hooks out there that are like, hey, coaches and consultants, are you doing blah, blah, blah? The reason that that hook works is because people who are not coaches and consultants are gonna skip past and they're not gonna click, right? And so through that, the algorithm is actually gonna find people who do click, right? Even if you're not targeting 
the right people, even if you're not saying, Hey, I want coaches and consultants through its learning, the algorithm is actually going to find coaches and consultants because they're more likely to engage with the ad because you're calling them out. Right. And then you're not wasting ad spend in the long run on people who are not coaches and consultants. So the hook can do that, but it can also inspire a ton of curiosity. So the hook is really the place where you're quickly getting to the point of the pain or, or whatever it is that you're trying to kind of talk to the prospect about. So, you know, good hooks are going to inspire curiosity, stop the scroll and get them to listen after the hook there's going to be a transition. So this is kind of building urgency to get you from the hook to the third section, which is breaking current belief patterns. So this one is really important. This is how you show the way that your prospects have been doing something, right? It's not the way that you do it. And it's not the way that you want them to do it. And it's not the way they should be doing it to get the results that they want. So, you know, I might say something like, Hey, people with an offer, did you know that DMing on Instagram is actually wasting you three hours per day? Here's what you should do instead. Running paid advertising is actually the way to get clients on demand without wasting your time. Because once you set it up, you never have to touch it again, right? That's just off the off my, my brain there. I, I don't know if it's great or not, but that, that break the belief pattern is kind of what I'm doing there, right? It's like most people think that DMing on Instagram is a way to get clients, but they're wrong. Here's why, right? Then you quickly, like you've made a lot of claims up to this point. You've kind of done a hook, you've broken their beliefs. Now they're gonna be thinking, Okay, but who are you? And so this is where you're actually gonna educate them on your expertise, why you're qualified to teach what you're teaching. So this is where you're building that proof, you're building that trust. So you can show testimonials, you can show you know, awards that you've won, speaking on stages, whatever it is, to sort of build that trust, that's what you're gonna do here. After that, you're really gonna use this portion to kind of build the pain. And of course, that's a, that's a weird way of saying it. As marketers say that uh, quite often, and really what we mean is just like, they should be feeling something here, right? About, man, yeah, I have tried it that way and it did not work. And so this is the portion where you're really gonna get under their skin with why their current solution isn't working. So, you know, for a weight loss, a diet program or something like that, you might say something like, hey, I know you've tried Weight Watchers and, and calorie counting and, you know, X, Y, and Z. Here's why those don't work. You might lose the weight, but then Christmas time comes and, you know, you gain it all back on, whatever it is, right? And you're going through the cycle of like, I've been there. I've felt that. This has been me too. I relate with you. I know it stinks, right? And that's kind of the build the pain section. From there, you're going into the solution. This is kind of where you're gonna start saying what you do differently and how you do it. You know, you don't have to give away the whole thing, but this is kind of what you're about to teach in the VSL later on, and you're kind of getting them inspired to go watch it. So maybe it's the three points that you're gonna teach in the VSL. Maybe it's your proprietary system for doing X, Y, or Z. That's what you're teaching here and the solution. And then finally, you're gonna have kind of like the last section, which is primarily calls to action. And for VSLs, you know, like I said, you're gonna list out what you're gonna teach. The actual calls to action, you don't have to have this many of them, but if you're gonna do a long like video ad, you definitely can, which is like, say exactly what they're gonna get if they opt in, tell them exactly how to opt in, build some urgency by saying like, hey, this might not be around forever, whatever it is, and then give them one more call to action, which is gonna say, click the link below, opt in, I'll see you in the training. So that is the, the overall the template of the ad. So that was part two. This part was pretty extensive. I'm gonna put a lot of resources around here so that you can view this you know, script, make a copy of it for yourself if you wanna fill it in. But apart from that, that's part two, that's the ad, keep it simple. You can add a lot of different variation ad. You can overcomplicate it. What I would say is do some research, other people in your space, what works for them. You can kind of start from there. You can make a little template for yourself and you can kind of make your own version. That's usually the quickest way to see if it's gonna work for you. So. Hopefully this is helpful. Uh, we're gonna move on to part three, which is the business manager.